I'm going to run through an example on how to build a dynamic problem. First I'm going to set up a, a new folder and then create a new Microsoft Excel worksheet within that folder. Now I'm just going to call that data um, for my Excel worksheet. And then when I open it up, I'm going to see you know just a blank worksheet. I'm going to give it um, two data sets. So this is the problem where you may have collected some dynamic data and the times don't match up uh, to each other, but you want to consolidate both data sets into one file. So here I'm going to create uh, you know some time in 0.5 second in increments um, up to 10, and then uh, give it some uh, just some a random starting point uh, between 0 and 10, and then uh, from there I want to see an exponential decay down. So I'm going to use the exponential. Um, with uh, negative uh, time divided by tau. Tau is my time constant. And so in this case, I'm going to select time, and then I'm going to say if tau is equal to 5. OK, and then I'm going to multiply by the, uh, the initial condition, make that a uh, fixed reference, and then drag it down. So there I have an exponential decay. Let me go ahead and plot this just to show what it, uh, what it looks like. And uh, there you can see y is the exponential decay as the time increases. Okay, so uh, for, I have my first uh, data set, my Y, which is my output for my model. And then I'm going to create a new data set. Let's say I collected these at different time intervals. Uh, for whatever reason, the uh, sampling frequency was different. And for this case, I would only collect it at uh, one second intervals. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill that down to 10. Um, and then go ahead and put in some another random starting value. In this case, I'm just generating some fake data, so it doesn't uh, matter very much. And uh, and then I'm going to um, do the same sort of exponential decay here. So my input x uh, is also going to have an exponential decay, and then y is going to follow that. Um, I'm going to have a little bit faster exponential decay. So if you saw my time constant there. Uh, was 3. Okay, so that's going to get to steady state a little bit faster than my y value. And I'm going to fill this one down and just generate some fake data. So x is my input, y is my output. They're on different uh, time intervals, and I want to synchronize those together. Now, what I'm going to do is first of all just go ahead and fix those random values uh, so they're not changing all the time. Um, so I'm just going to paste uh, values there. Okay, so that's just a, a fixed number now. Okay, now I'm going to take and try to consolidate these into one data set. In this case, I'll just work at between 0, 2, 4, um, so in, in increments of 2 up to 10. And I just want to take a subset of the data samples that were used in the previous, um, the, the raw data collection um, that's shown in B and E columns. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to use the VLOOKUP function within Excel. VLOOKUP is a way to look up a value from a data range. So I'm going to look up time equals zero from from this range. Okay, so there's my table array. I need to select F4 to give it fixed values there. Uh, with the dollar signs, it'll be fixed. So as I drag it down, those won't change. And then I want to look up the second column in that. Okay, and then now I have a true or a false, so approximate or an exact match. <clears throat> if I don't find the exact time, I don't want it returning uh, not a number. So I'll go put true to return the closest one to the value I specified there in my time. Fortunately, all of those times are exactly available. So if I look, there's the 3.14, uh, there's the 2.1, and uh, I'm going to do it for x as well. So do the VLOOKUP function again and then look up the value uh, time for my new table uh, selected from that range. Uh, give it fixed uh, reference and then select column 2 with an approximate match. Okay, so I want to select true there uh, for the approximate match. And then go ahead and fill that one down. And now I have my new data set that's extracted from the other data sets. The other reason why this might be important is to condense the data down just a little bit um, because if you have too many time points uh, the solution time can increase. I'm going to copy this into a new data sheet and uh, in this case I'm just going to paste the values because I had some formulas in there and then I'm going to save it as a CSV file, a comma separated value file and it's important to not select the Macintosh one uh, that gives some additional uh, 
uh, carriage returns or uh, different carriage returns that are not compatible with APM. So go ahead and select uh, data.csv and then click save or OK. And uh, it says that this, uh, just go ahead and click OK here um, and then yes um, for this question and it's saved. OK, so now you can close it. If it asks you to save again, you don't need to save it um, again. So now it's created the data.csv. Go ahead and edit that with the text editor. I'm going to use Notepad++. And there I can see time, y, and x with comma separated values. OK, so now I have my data file. And now what I want to do is uh, create a model file. So I'm going to create a new, I'll go ahead and create a new uh, text document. And then I'll just name this one uh, model.apm. If you can't see your file extensions, you may need to go into folder options and change those so you can see your file extensions and change them. So I'm just going to start with a model, end model, and then here I'm going to have parameters, uh, end parameters. Um, within that I'm going to have x. So x is going to be my input or uh, something that I'm going to be able to specify, whereas variables are things that uh, the, the solver is going to be able to calculate. Okay, so. I have parameters and variables, and then the final section is going to be equations. Now this is where I'm going to put my first order uh, differential equation. So this is going to be tau, my time constant, times dy dx, or d, uh, actually this is dy dt. Uh, the dollar sign means differential with respect to time, equals negative y plus uh, k is my gain, and then x is my input. Okay, so a, a first order differential equation that I'm going to solve. Um, and then also use this uh, dynamic data to as inputs uh, to this model. Now I'm also going to get some constants. You know, I noticed I had tau and then also k. Five was my time constant, okay, and then uh, k is my gain. Okay, I'll just put down 0 0.9 uh, for my gain. I can change that later. Okay, so now I have my model. I'll go ahead and save that and then uh, close my model file and now I need to create something that will run these. I can do this either in Python or MATLAB. I'll show Python first and then get to to MATLAB. Um, I'm just going to create, uh, you can name this anything you like. I'm going to name this main.py and then I'm going to go ahead and edit it with uh, the Windows editor for Python just for some syntax highlighting. You can also use other text editors as well. Um, let me go ahead and resize this so you can see it in the screen. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and import some APM libraries. So from APM, import everything. And then I'm going to specify a server name. Um, this one is going to be uh, the xps.apmonitor.com server. And then I'm going to give an application name. So I'm going to, when I refer to my uh, application, this is how I'm going to call it. I can create you know, different names for different applications. Okay, and then so I have my server and then application. The first thing I need to do is go ahead and clear everything from the server that was previously there. Um, so I'm going to say server application, and then I'm going to give it the command clear all. So that's going to clear everything from the server. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and load my APM uh, model file. And this one I use the APM underbar load function with the server comma application is the first two, and then I remember that my model file is model.apm. And then I'm going to load my data file. This one's going to be CSV underbar load and server comma application again. And that one is named data.csv. Okay, so now I have my model and my data file loaded. And now I want to uh, I want to go ahead and solve this. Uh, so I do server application and give it the solve command. So it's going to solve it. And then I want to open up a web viewer and that's going to be APM underbar web and then the two commands, just server application. Okay, so if I if I run this, um, then it's going to, uh, actually, first of all, I need to get the APM um, libraries. Uh, we haven't gotten those yet, so go to the website, apmonitor.com, and then uh, scroll down, and you will see uh, the Python interface. Go ahead and open that up, and uh, then you'll see a zipped archive that you can download. Download that to your computer. And then when you open it up, the only file that you need is apm.py. So go ahead and copy that. And then go ahead and paste it into your folder where your application is going to run.
Okay, so it's just a 7 kilobyte file. Um, it just has some functions in there that allow you to interact with the web server. Okay, so now I'm going to open up my main.py again and uh, go ahead and run this with either F5 or you can select it from the run, uh, run module. And then when it runs, it's going to open up a web interface. Okay, so this is the, the web interface. There's a couple different um, page links there at the top uh, to help you navigate, and then you can select some plots. Now here you'll just see a single point. Okay, so what we need to do is go back to our, our uh, script file and go ahead and specify that this is a dynamic problem. By default, it solves in steady state, so only a, a single point. So I'm going to change an option. I give it the server application and then the name of this option is iMode. So iMode 3 is default, that's steady state optimization. Uh, 7 is sequential simulation, like an ODE or DAE integrator, forward stepping. 4 is a simultaneous um, simulation mode. Okay, so when it, it solves now, um, let me go ahead and put that uh, run screen there so you can see it. Uh, okay, so now it's it solved and now we see the values of y that were uh, predicted by that uh, sequ sequence of inputs from x. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and also uh, you know, make the x variable uh, available from the web interface. I'm going to specify this one as a, a manipulated variable, something that I can manipulate or uh, you know, it has to be defined as a parameter. And then I'm also going to define a state variable now this is going to be y, this is an output, so fvs or mvs are going to be uh, from the parameter selection, svs or cvs are from uh, the variable section. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is, uh, if you select fvs or mvs, sv or cvs, you can see those at the top. There's my x, that was uh, input from the, the data file, and then I'm also going to show my y, uh, I can select that there, and see the value of y. Okay, uh, the other thing I want to do is go ahead and show X and Y um, on the same plot. And I can do that at the very bottom of my APM file. I'll go ahead and do file uh, star.plt. And I'm going to do a new trend. And within that trend, I'll include X and Y. And then I'll do end file. And then save my save my model file, and then go ahead and run it again, and then it'll come up with a new trend there. Um, there I just double clicked on the main.py and it, it ran as well, um, and there it shows x and y. Okay, so there's a dashboard that shows some commonly configured options, upper and lower bounds, other things that are there, parameters that you can change uh, for each of those variables. Um, now I'm going to close that out, and uh, now I'm going to also create a uh, MATLAB version of this. So I'm just going to call this main.m, okay, uh, and go ahead and uh, make the change to that file extension. And then when I open it up, MATLAB is going to open, but it's going to be Python code, so I'm going to need to change it um, to be compatible with MATLAB. So let me go ahead and uh, resize this a little bit just to fit inside the screen. and uh, You'll see that uh, you know, what we need to do to modify this file so that it can it can run in, in MATLAB as well. Okay, so first of all, instead of the from APM import, I'm just going to include an add path and then use the APM folder. We'll grab that folder in just a second. Uh, I'm going to do a clear all, a close all, and then a CLC. Uh, clear all cl clears all the variables that are close all, close all plots, and then CLC clears the screen. And then all I'm going to do is add a semicolon to the end of every line that I had in the Python, and then it will have an equivalent. Uh, it will have an equivalent um, uh, command there in in MATLAB. Okay, so I just don't want to see the output from those, so I'm going to suppress that with the semicolon. I could leave the semicolon off if I wanted to, and they would actually be even a little bit more similar. Okay, so I've condensed it down just a little bit. We need to grab that APM folder. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab that APM folder, just visit the AP Monitor website again, and then go to the APM MATLAB interface, and scroll down, and you will see a zipped archive that you can download. Uh, go ahead and open that up once it finishes downloading, and then copy just that whole folder, the APM folder, and then paste it into your, uh, paste it into 
into your run directory that you have. So you have apm.py, that's for the Python, but then the apm uh, folder, that is for the MATLAB. Okay, and that's where you're going to add the path uh, to that folder. And then when you run it, you get the same results that you did before, just like you did for the Python. Okay, so uh, there's the uh, MVs, uh, the MVs that you declared, that was X. Okay, so you see some of the parameters that you can change. You can change them there from the web interface. If you scroll over it, you can see a pop-up of the uh, a description of the parameters that you can change. Okay, so um, now what we want to do is also sh show you how to change the solver. If you go to config, uh, you can go down to the solver, and then there's a couple different solvers that you can use. You can also change those. You can change any of these parameters from the uh, the script as well. There's I mode like we changed in our script from the NLC uh, from the APM underbar options. Okay so that concludes this uh, portion. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and and augment this model and uh, make it so that we can solve uh, multiple dynamic data sets with one model and one data set. So in this case I'm going to put a vector there one to n and then I have to define I have to define n in this case n equals three okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna say n equals three and then uh, also on my y I'm gonna go y one two and three and I do that with the uh, square brackets and then one to n with a semicolon or the the colon in between them and then also in my equation now I'm going to write uh, just with one line. I'm going to write those three equations, and now here in here in the trend as well, um, y'all need to go back and and uh, add those. I'll do that in just a second. Let me go ahead and just run it now with those uh, three. Um, I'm going to well actually I need to open up the data file and create those those three uh, new variables there for y and for x. Okay, so I'm going to put the square bracket there in my data file as well um, and then I'm just going to go and copy and insert these cells I go ahead and do it uh, for all three uh, y1 2 and 3 okay so I'm going to have three dynamic data sets now y1 is going to have a corresponding x1 uh, y2 is going to have the corresponding x2 and then also y3 with the x3 I'm just going to change this data it doesn't really matter so much for this example problem what I change it to so I'm just going to change uh, some of these values for X and um, and then also for Y as well okay so in this part um, you know I'm just I'm just taking uh, you could do it just like you did for the the previous example that I showed but but the horizons the time horizons need to be the same for all three data sets um, and at the same data point. So if you need to, you can synchronize those with the VLOOKUP function uh, to be able to synchronize uh, the data points, possibly interpolate uh, between uh, if you don't have a, a sample right at that, that data point. Okay, I'm also going to do that for why I'm just going to change the initial condition just a little bit, just so we can see them um, just a little bit better so they're not on top of each other on the plots. Okay, so I'm just going to fabricate some data for these three data sets and then we're, uh, we've modified the model already and then what we need to do is um, save this again as a CSV file. I'm going to create a different CSV file that I created before just so we can see uh, have both examples in the same folder. I'm just going to name this one data3 because now it has three dynamic uh, data sets within one data file. Go ahead and click OK um, for this and then also yes. And uh, the file is, is now saved. You can close it. If it asks you to save again, go ahead and click don't save. And um, okay, so now we have our new uh, data set. And now we need to edit our main.m file to include the, the three data sets. We just need to reference, uh, you know, any of the times where we referenced X and Y, we need to change those and also load in our new data set, which is data three. Okay, so now this is going to be X1. Um, I'm going to include X2 and then also X3. And then I'm also going to do it for Y as well. Create the three of those, uh, Y1 two and three. This just allows me to see it from the web interface. I'm going to solve it. Okay, so let me go ahead and click run and uh, then see 
the output here. Now this one, I, I didn't update the trend yet, so let me go back into the model and um, just change the model to include those three new variables. If I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see I just still have X and Y here. So I'm going to do X1, X2, and then X3. I want to see all of these on the same on the same plot. Okay, so Y1, Y2, and then Y3. And then we're going to I'm going to go ahead and save this and then run um, the MATLAB file one more time. Okay, so when this runs, when I open up that uh, that new trend, then I'm going to see all of the uh, the data sets there on one uh, on one file. I can also click on this plot and make it full screen. Um, you know, you can make it much uh, bigger if you escape to exit back out. Okay, so now um, I want to take this same thing and put it into my Python, uh, modify my Python script, and um, you know it's going to be very similar to. Um, I just need to re remove the semicolons from the end uh, for most of it, and uh, also delete some of the things that were MATLAB specific. Okay, so I'm just going to find and replace any semicolons and then replace those with nothing, select replace all, and then save it. Okay, so now I have my Python file back, and then I'm going to run this, and this should hopefully uh, return the same thing. Okay, so there I see uh, the same thing that's available from the Python script.